I think the answer is maybe. <laughs> uh, I, I think the answer is to put her on the board and it'll bring down the average age enormously. We won't get criticized as much. Uh, the, you're, you're exactly right in that uh, we do like moats and we used to be able to identify them in a, in a newspaper that was the only newspaper in town or, or in TV stations where we, where we uh, felt the dominant positions and we felt the, the, uh, the product was underpriced in terms of advertising it. Uh, we saw it in brands sometimes. Uh, and it is true that, that in the tech world, if you can build a moat, it can be incredibly uh, valuable. I've not felt the confidence that I was the best one to judge that in many cases. It, uh, it wasn't hard to figure out who was winning at any given time or what their business was about, but there were a huge number of people that knew more about the game than I did. And we don't want to try and win in a game we don't understand. We may hire people, such as Ted and Todd, that are, are better at understanding certain uh, uh, areas of investing uh, than I am, or maybe even Charlie is. Uh, but you're, the principles haven't changed. You're right that some of the old ones have lost their moat. And you're, you're right that there are going to be companies in the future that have them that will be enormously valuable. And we hope we can identify one every now and then. But we won't, we'll still stay within what we, where we think we know what we're doing. And obviously we'll make mistakes even within that area. But we won't go into something because somebody else tells us it's a good thing to do. I mean, we, we, we are not going to subcontract your money to somebody else's judgment. You can take your money and, and follow somebody else's judgment, but we're not in the, we're not in the business of, of thinking that if we hire 10 people with specialties in this area or that, that it will lead to superior investment results. And we do worry that we may, we could blow a lot of money that way. So we'll do our best to, to enlarge the circle of competence of the people at Berkshire so that we don't miss so many, but we'll, we we'll miss a lot in the future. We missed a lot in the past. The main thing to do is to find things where our batting average is going to be high. And if we miss the biggest ones, that really doesn't bother us as long as as long as the things we do with money work out okay. Charlie. Well, I think we've still got an awful lot of companies with big moats, uh, and. A lot of them are very, and some of our industrial brands were just incredibly strong in the niches we're in. Uh, so you, the Berkshire shareholders don't need to worry about it. We're just one big morass of unprofitability or anything like that. But we have not covered ourselves with glory in the new fields. We won't end up all in buggy whips, though, or anything. Of it. But, uh, uh, but it's a very good question, and it's what we focus on all of the time. And We're hope, trying to improve. And, and we hope you see, we see you back here for your fourth next year. My question is how to best emulate your success in building your circle of competence. Given the environment today in investing is a lot more competitive than when you started out, what would you do differently, if anything at all, when building your circle? Would you still build a very broad generalist framework or would you build a much deeper but narrower focus, say, on industries, markets, or even a country? And if so, which ones would interest you? Thank you. Yeah, well, you're right. It is, a, it is much more competitive now than when I started. And you would, uh, when I started, I literally could take the Moody's Industrial Manual, the Moody's Banks and Financial Manual, and I could go through page by page and I, at least run my, run my eyes over every company and think about which ones I might think more about. Uh, it's it's important. I would just do a lot, a whole lot of reading. I'd try and learn as much as I could about as many businesses, and I would try to figure out which ones I really had uh, some important knowledge and understanding that was uh, probably different than 
overwhelmingly most of my competitors, and I would, I would uh, also try and figure out where, which ones I didn't understand, and I would focus on having as big a circle as I could have, and as, and also focus on being as realistic as I could about where the perimeters of my circle of competence were. I knew when I met Lorimer Davidson in January of 1951, I could get insurance. I mean, it, what he said made so much sense to me in the three or four hours I spent with him on that Saturday. So I dug into it, and I, I, I could understand it. My mind worked well in that respect. Uh, I didn't think I could understand retailing. All I'd done was work for the same grocery store that Charlie had, and neither one of us learned that much about retailing, except it was harder work than we liked. And uh, you've got to do the same thing, and you've got way more competition now. But uh, if you get to know even about a relatively small area more than other people do, and you don't feel a compulsion to act too often, you just you just wait till you wait till the odds are strongly in your favor. Uh, it's still a very interesting game. It's harder than it used to be. Charlie. Well, I think the right strategy for the great mass of humanity is to specialize. Nobody wants to go to a doctor that's half proctologist and half dentist, you know. <laughs> and and well and. The, so the ordinary way to succeed is to narrowly specialize. Warren and I really didn't do that. And, that, and we didn't because we, we prefer the other type of activity. But I don't think we can recommend it to other people. Yeah, it was a little more treasure hunting in no, our day. Uh, and, and it was easy to spot the treasure. We made it work, but it was kind of a lucky thing. Yeah. It's You'll, not the standard way to go. The business, at least I best understood, actually was insurance. I mean, I... I and, and I had very little competition. And you know, I would, if I went, to, I went to the insurance department in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I remember one time I drove there just to check on some Pennsylvania company. And this is when you couldn't get all this information on the internet. And I went in and I asked about some company. And the guy said, you're the first one that's ever asked about that company. And uh, uh, there wasn't a lot. I went over to the Standard and Poor's Library on Houston, Houston Street as they call it, and, and I would go up there and ask for all this obscure information, and there wasn't anybody sitting around there. They had a bunch of tables that you could sit and examine things through, and uh, so it was, it was, there was less competition. But if you know even one thing very well, um, it, 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 it'll give you an edge at some point. At, uh, you know, it's what Tom Watson Sr. said it. IBM, you know, uh, I'm no genius, but I'm smart in spots, and I stay around those spots, and that's that's basically what Charlie and I try to do, and I think that's probably what you can do, but you'll find that those spots. Yeah, we did it in several fields. That's hard. And we got our head handed to us a few times too. Yeah.